In terms of longevity, in an earlier video, we saw that serine plus vitamin B6 may be the best way to reduce homocysteine. And if you missed that, let's do a quick recap here. Starting with dietary intake of folic acid, that's converted into serum folate, which in combination with vitamin B12 will convert homocysteine into methionine. Similarly, dietary intake of betaine, otherwise known as trimethylglycine, or choline, which is converted into betaine, will also convert homocysteine into methionine. But decreasing homocysteine to increase methionine may not be a good strategy for longevity, as methionine restriction extends lifespan in animal models. Whether that's true or not in people, nobody knows yet. In contrast, adding serine plus vitamin B6 can convert homocysteine into cystathionine, which in the presence of adequate B6 will further convert cystathionine into cysteine, which can then be incorporated into GSH or glutathione. Now, there are videos on the channel where glutathione restoration in older adults, clinical trials in older adults, improved a whole bunch of adverse health-related outcomes and extended lifespan in mice. So I think serine plus B6, or I have thought, we'll see how the data looks, may be the best way to reduce homocysteine. So for my fourth blood test in 2023, did serine plus B6 reduce homocysteine? So to recap that journey, for the second test, I didn't supplement with, with any serine, and my normal dietary intake of vitamin B6, 3 milligrams per day, resulted in a homocysteine of 11.1 micromolar. Then for the April test, I started supplementing with serine, about 2 grams per day, increased my B6 intake through supplementation, 8 milligrams supplementation per day to 11 milligrams per day. And that started a push or normal variation, I don't know, but homocysteine went in the right direction for that test. For the most recent test in July, I further increased serine levels to about 4 grams per day and then tripled my B6 intake again through supplementation where it's 12x higher than where I started for the March test. But unfortunately, homocysteine did not go in the right direction. It went back towards where 11.1, where it was for the second test. So then the question is, why didn't it work? Why didn't serine plus B6 reduce homocysteine? So then the first question could be is, did nicotinic acid supplementation increase homocysteine? So I started niacin uh, supplementation nine days before the July test, and that increased my NAD, but it may have pushed homocysteine higher. And why that's true can be shown here. On the y-axis, we've got plasma levels of homocysteine, and this is a study done in young adults, 20 to 23-year-olds, relatively small study of 30 people. So after three hours uh, being fed uh, uh, water, which was the control, what was fed to controls, we can see that there was no increase for plasma levels of homocysteine three hours after consuming the water. But for young adults that consumed 300 milligrams of the other B3, vitamin B3 or niacin form, niacinamide, we can see that there was a big increase for homocysteine from 11, around 11, to 16 micromolar after one, one and a half hours of supplementation. And then three hours after the supplementation, homocysteine went up even further to about 18 micromolar. What about nicotinic acid? That's what I was supplementing with. I wasn't supplementing with niacinamide. So that data is shown there for people who were supplemented with 300 milligrams of nicotinic acid. Although it wasn't a significant increase, we can see that homocysteine did indeed move in the quote-unquote wrong direction towards higher levels after an hour and a half, which plateaued from an hour and a half to three hours. But note that I wasn't taking 300 milligrams of nicotinic acid per day. I was taking double that, around 600 milligrams per day. So it's possible that Supplementing with nicotinic acid, with, which raised my NAD, may have pushed homocysteine in the wrong direction. Alternatively, besides reacting with homocysteine, serine can be converted into other metabolites, including cysteine and glycine. So is that what happened? So in terms of a recap of why that could be true, serine is converted into cysteine without affecting homocysteine, as, as I showed on the previous slide. And we can see that here. So starting with cysteine on the, uh, sorry, serine on the left, in the presence of acetyl-CoA, it's converted into O-acetylserine. And then, then in the presence of H2S, otherwise known as thiosulfate, that's converted into cysteine. And note, that's without affecting homocysteine in these two enzymatic reactions. Similarly, serine is converted into glycine, also without impacting homocysteine. So starting with serine, in the presence of H4-folate or tetrahydrofolate, that's converted into glycine. So again, is that what happened? Now I have metabolomic data, which includes data for serine, cysteine, and glycine, so we can address or attempt to address that question. And if you're familiar with the channel, you've seen me use this kit, which is a gold mine of metabolites and metabolite data for kynurinine tryptophan as part of the uh, parts of a part of the de novo NAD synthesis pathway, 
taurine and polyamines, which extend lifespan, uh, cysteine and cysteine, methionine sulfoxide divided by methionine as markers of oxidative stress, metabolite ratios as markers of oxidative stress, EPA and DHA, fish oil fatty acids, which decline during age, aging. And as I mentioned, this kit is a gold mine, 500 plus metabolites, data for that much. Discount link in the video's description. All right, so on to the data. So I have two blood tests so far using the IOLO kit in April and May. And for those two tests, I supplemented with uh, two grams and four grams respectively of serine per day. And then below that, we've got blood levels of serine, cysteine, and glycine. So starting with serine, we can see that there was a 70 micromolar drop despite doubling my serine intake. So that's either variability in the test itself or it was consumed. Somehow that 70 micromolar was being consumed somewhere. Definitely not to reduce homocysteine though. Now it wasn't, serine wasn't converted into glycine as we can see that my glycine levels were pretty close to stable from 313 to about 301 micromolar. If serine was converted into glycine, we'd expect to see an increase in glycine for that second test, but that's not what happened. In contrast, there is an increase for cysteine. And again, I don't know if this is normal variability test to test just from the IOLO kit, but that cysteine level went up by about 80%. And granted, that doesn't make up for the about uh, 60 micromolar drop from 170 to 110 for serine, uh, it's, as it's only about an eight micromolar uh, increase for cysteine. But it does suggest that some of the serine could have been converted into cysteine without affecting homocysteine. Now, with that in mind, I haven't given up on serine yet. For the next test, I'm gonna go higher, six grams per day. I've been supplementing with that for uh, a few weeks now. Uh, and I'm gonna continue vit with vitamin B6. So I'm gonna give it one more chance to reduce homocysteine, only this time I'm gonna take niacin or nicotinic acid out completely. So if serine plus B6 has any effect, very high dose serine has any effect on homocysteine, we should see it on the next test. And if we don't, I'm gonna take it out of the approach. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links and merch that you may be interested in, including discount links for at-home metabolomics, NAD quantification, green tea, epigenetic testing, oral microbiome composition, at-home blood testing with SciFox Health. And note that their panel is almost completely different from the at-home metabolomics, including ApoB, diet tracking, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, buy me a coffee. We've also got merch, so if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Die Trying brand, that link and all the other links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. Hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.